Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the February 2024 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around to see how they were made and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday's debut video was a big one. I showed you the new sheet load of cards, February, 2024. We unboxed the new Junior Box of the Month from Not Too Shabby, who is sponsoring my first set this month. You met our guest artist, Terry Cowens, and I told you how you could download the printable for free. Now, if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to check out the description box below. Today, I am back to show you how I made my first set of cards, and just like every other month, my team of collaborators will be joining me to share their sets. To see what they have created, there is a playlist in the description box below for the YouTube team members. And to see what the Instagram team has created, there is a link down there as well. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. Now, if you want to show us your sheet load, I do have a new guidelines video up that tells you the different ways you can do that. That is linked in the description box below as well. And if you're sharing online, don't forget to use the hashtags at the top of each printable. Now, don't forget, I mentioned yesterday about a special discount with Not Too Shabby, which I have information in the description box. But also later today, I'm going to tell you how you can enter to win a Junior Box of the Month for yourself. So make sure to keep watching to get those details. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. For today's cards, I pre-selected four pieces of paper from Not Too Shabby's Tweet Paper Pad. Now I did two of the same pairs, but you could definitely do two different pairs. I will be cutting all four papers the same exact way following the cutting guides and if your pattern paper has a direction make sure to keep that in mind before you make the first cut. Mine did so I rotated the rainbow so the top was at the right and then I cut this piece so the top part was four and a half inches and the bottom part was a leftover one and a half inches. From that top part I'm going to cut four pieces that are three quarters of an inch wide and two pieces that are one and a half inches wide. Now don't forget you don't have to remember any of these dimensions. You can visit yesterday's video to download the printable. Now the bottom section I cut this to four and a quarter inches wide first and then I rotate it and cut it in half to three quarters of an inch tall. Now this does get a little tricky trying to hold that in place so I brought in a piece of scotch removable tape and made that slice. Now there is a bit left over which later you'll see how I use those on the inside of the cards. For the second piece of paper, I'm going to show you how I cut the strips at the bottom first so I didn't have to bring in the removable tape and then that top portion I cut the same exact way as the rainbow paper. I do go back in and I cut those two smaller sections, the piece C, to four and a quarter inches wide. Now these leftovers look a little bit different than the first, but I will still be using these in the end as well. Off camera, I cut the remaining two pattern papers in the exact same way, and here is a look at all of those pieces. For CS1, I brought in two sheets of the coordinating yellow cardstock, and I'm going to cut it per the instructions. Now to make sure you get all your pieces, the first thing you need to do is cut a one inch strip off the bottom of the eight and a half inch wide side. Then you're going to rotate it back so it sits portrait and cut one inch off the left. 
Now with this remaining large piece, I cut it into four pieces that are three and a half by four and three quarters. You are left with some scraps for this. I didn't use it on the inside of my card today, but you definitely could. Once I had piece A cut, I brought back in those one inch strips and cut them into four pieces that were four and a quarter inches wide. This meant the piece at the bottom just got cut in half and then the one I cut off the side, there is a little left over. While I cut that second piece of cardstock, I wanted to take a minute to recognize some special channel members. In the month of January, I had some of them earn their one year membership badge. So scrolling up on screen now are their names. I want to say a great big thank you for your continued support and thanks as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all. If you'd like to learn more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. This sheet load calls for eight card bases, which is four pieces of cardstock cut in half and folded in half. I actually already had some white ones pre-made, so I grabbed those from my stash. Now mine fold along the left edge, the long side, but you could definitely use top folding if that's what you prefer. Your next step might be to go ahead and die cut and cut your pieces for the focal points, but I'm gonna show you in a little bit how I do that. For now, I'm going to get my pattern papers put on their cardstock mats, and I'm going to start with the skinny strips that go across the middle. Per the sketch, these pieces are going to fill the mat left to right with a little border on the top and bottom. So I'm going to add adhesive to the back of one of my pieces of pattern paper and then place it onto its cardstock mat. For this first one, I'm just going to do it on my desktop here using my fingernail to help me line up that bottom edge. For the rest of them, I'm going to bring in a little helper, and for me, that is my mini score buddy. You could use anything that has a little lip or edge like this one does. I apply adhesive to the back of the pattern paper in the same way, but when I go to put my pieces together, I'm going to use that edge at the bottom to push my cardstock up against and then to push my pattern paper up against. All I have to do now is center it left to right, and it's going to make sure that it is flush at that bottom. I finished adhering these pieces together with the help of my score buddy. Now it's time to put the rest of the pattern paper pieces onto their CS1A mat. Now if you look at the sketch, I have the outside patterns being different than the one in the center. You could do this or you could make them all the same across. That is up to you. Now when I put these together, I like to do the outsides first and then the inside. So on this first one, I'm going to add adhesive to the back of the yellow pattern paper piece and put that on the left side with about an eighth of an inch border on the top, left, and bottom. Then I'm going to add the other yellow strip to the opposite side, trying to get those same borders. Finally, I will add the rainbow piece between these two yellow strips. For this, I add adhesive to the back, and then I'm going to center it left to right in the opening that's left. And I do try to get the bottoms all aligned so everything looks as nice and uniform as possible. While I finish working on these, I wanted to stop by with a special giveaway. As I've announced in the debut and process video, Jamie from Not Too Shabby has donated one of her junior boxes of the month for me to give to one lucky subscriber. Thanks again to Jamie for sponsoring my first set. I have loved working with the products. To be entered to win the junior box, which if you want to see the contents, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video, I'm going to have you visit the Not Too Shabby online store. And then come back here and I have two questions I'd like you to answer. 
The first question is, which of the not too shabby subscriptions would you most like to sign up for? I will have a link to the subscription page in the description box below. For my second question, I'm not sure if you knew it, not only does Jamie sell other popular brands on her site, but she also has lots of products under her own brand. So in the description box, you'll also find a link to the not too shabby products. I want you to look around a little bit and let me know which one, or maybe even two if you can't decide, is your favorite. You're going to come back to this video and leave a comment below with the answers to both of those questions. Please do make sure you're specific and give product names, not just descriptions, in case somebody else in the comments wants to go check that one out. In your comment, you must also include the hashtag, hashtag not too shabby. That way I know that you've answered both questions and would like to be entered to win. Your comment must be left by midnight on February 15th, and then I will be back with an announcement video on or around the 18th. I can't wait to read about all of your favorites. Once those pieces were on their mat, I brought in the card bases and started adhering these together. Because I wanted to keep everything pretty flat for mailing, I used my ATG to put adhesive on the back and put these flat down onto the fronts of the card bases. I then just continued adding all of these until all eight cards had their trio of pattern papers. The card front still need the skinny strip across the middle and that semicircle for the focal point, but because I don't quite know how my focal points will go together yet and how far up or down the strip will go on the card, I'm going to hold off on that for now. Instead, I'm going to skip to creating the focal points. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, there is a special channel member bonus this month. It is an SVG cut file to help you cut those semicircles. But don't worry, I am going to show you how you can cut those if you're not a channel member or have access to an electronic cutter. The printable calls for four two and a half inch circles that you'll cut in half to yield eight total pieces. Now if you print this at 100%, the sketch on the front is to size. So what I like to do is bring in possible dies that I'm going to use to see how they fit. That first one was a little too small and the second one was a little too big, but I did decide to go with that. Now, if you want to adjust that, you definitely can make it larger, make it smaller. You don't even have to use a semicircle. Make the sketch your own. Once you've die cut your circle, you'll want to bring in a trimmer and cut this in half. My circle is just a little bit bigger than two and a half inches, so I lined it up. Luckily, I have markings to the left and right of my cut line, and I centered it just right between about the one and a quarter inch mark on each side. It was just a little bit over since the circle was larger. And now I have two of those sentiment pieces from one circle. For my focal point, I will be using that middle rainbow on the Rainbow Notes stamp set and the High Friend Sentiment. And because I'm going to be using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, I will be heat embossing with black ink and clear embossing powder onto Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I did stamp all of these off camera and now I'll show you how I color them. I did try to match the colors of the rainbow on the pattern paper with some of my markers. Now I will list those individual colors below as well as the clear blender pen. When I use my Zig Clean colors, especially on something curved like this, I usually come part way in from each edge. Then I'm going to grab the clear blender and I blend it in about halfway into the white area. And when I think my brush has too much of that darkest shade on it, I wipe it off there on the side. Then I go back into the middle and just blend the two sides together. And that way you have some shading and highlights and it's super easy. Now to color the remaining, I am going to show you the process. I did bring in a separate piece of cardstock there to wipe the excess color onto. Just later when I cut this out with my scan and cut, I don't want it to cut out all of those little bitty pieces that I have colored in. 
So I'll show you here how I finish one of the rainbows with that same process for the arcs. And then when I get to the cloud at the bottom, I used the light gray. I went around the edges, just kind of made a border, and then I colored or blended that into the middle. So it's still white, but you can tell that it's a little bit different than the area around it. It just gives that cloud some more dimension. I colored the remaining rainbows off camera and then I used my brother's scan and cut to cut these out. Once those were colored and cut, I brought back in the elements for a card and played with how I wanted the layout to look, including figuring out how far up I wanted the strip to go on the card and where I might want to stamp the sentiment. Once I had that all figured out, it was time to get those stamped. To make quick work of stamping eight focal points, I will be using my Misty, and I'm going to put my semicircles in the lower right hand corner so those corners meet. Then I got the high friend stamp set up in the lower right hand corner of the semicircle, and I got these inked up and stamped. Once I had that first one done and I knew it looked okay, it was super easy to ink up and stamp the seven remaining. Once those were all stamped, it was time to finish assembling the cards. For this, I brought back in the card bases and the matted pattern paper strip and got those adhered together. Then I added adhesive to the back of the semicircle and placed that right up against the yellow mat. I did make sure when I added adhesive to the matted strip that I got extra put at the ends and I pressed those down tightly onto the card front. And this is because with the center layers, the middle of that strip is popped up higher than the outside. So I just want to make sure that these stay together. I finished adhering the rest of these together off camera and I also added foam tape to the back of each of my rainbows. I did want to add just a little bit of dimension to the card front. I continued adding the rainbows to each of my cards and I just love how these turned out. And once I had that done, I wanted to add a little sparkle. So I brought in some mini sparkly sequins and added a trio to each of the semicircles around the rainbow using my Barely Art liquid glue and a jewel picker. On the insides, which you don't see me do, I did use up all of the scraps of pattern paper to add a little angled banner. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the February 2024 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the other collaborators who are sharing today by using those links down in the description box. I will also have the YouTube playlist as an end card here in just a minute. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.